all know about buy low, sell high. And uh, when we see buy low, sell high, ang magandang tanong doon is, how do we identify if low na ba talaga yung stock? Kung saan tayo pwedeng pumasok? And uh, on this video, yun yung tatalakayin natin. So basically guys, to identify um, undervalued stocks, uh, I'd like to introduce you to the multiple. Multiple or ratio or kung ano man yung, yung mga gusto nating itawag sa kanya. But uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll tell you more about, uh, about this. No? In essence, we want to see a multiple wherein we can compare it to other stocks. So kaya nga nasasabi natin dito, uh, if the multiple is higher, we can we can say na it is more expensive. Let me give you a a scenario here. Siyempre, ano na tayo, di ba? Nasa magapas ko na. Nag-iisip na tayo lahat ng Noche Buena. Kung ano yung pwede natin ihanda on the Noche Buena. So, siyempre, uh, para makapaghanda ka, for example, ako, I went to the grocery store. And uh, just the usual, uh, kunwari, pupunta ako ng Pure Gold. So, pagpasok mo pa lang, you have your health declaration there, tapos yung inyong uh, temperature, kukunin din. No? And then, syempre, ang unang-unang ko pupuntahan, kasi wala pa akong idea kung, kung anong bibiling ko, I went to the meat section. And from there, nakita ko itong tatlong, ano na to, tatlong meat na to. So, I have pork, I have chicken, and I have beef. And uh, ang maganda naman sa kanila, meron na rin naman siyang presyo. No? You have 76 pesos for, for pork uh, at 500 grams, 88 uh, for chicken, and then 80 for beef. Ang question dito is, alin dito yung makaka makakatipid ako? Saan ako makakasulit? Kung alin yung bibilin ko. No? Kasi if you can see here, although alam natin yung presyo, these are just the numbers, pero iba-iba dito eh, di ba? Wouldn't it be better kung ma-identify natin kung ano yung baseline measurement nila. And from this alone, we can identify na, ah, okay, so mas mura pala or mas makakatipid pala ako if I go with chicken. That is how multiples work. No? Ito yung baseline measurement. Kasi we have a lot of stocks in the market. Diba? And it's quite challenging para masabi natin na yung isang stock is um, is mas mura or mas mahal on another stock. So we have this baseline measurement or multiples to guide us para malaman natin na, ah, okay, so at least on this particular multiple, mas mura pala to. Okay? Now, speaking of multiple, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of multiples na available, no? Pagdating sa fundamental analysis. Actually, this is fundamental analysis, ha? No? Uh, dito nyo maririnig yung mga ratios. Diba? So, we have, for example, mga debt-to-equity ratio, um, uh, market cap to, to price earnings, uh, earnings per share. Basta, marami pa yun. Um, kumbaga, you just have to pick your poison. No? But in the, on this particular topic, what I'd like to introduce, which is, I think, siguro kilala nyo na naman siya, is the PE ratio. Okay, PE ratio is one of the most common, pinakamadaling ratio to, to use and identify if a stock is cheap or expensive. Okay, uh, I'll give you some specific examples later on. But uh, sa ngayon, let's just dive in dito. No? Uh, we won't be doing a lot of math dito no? sa session na to, no? but I just wanted to... To let you know uh, that this is how PE ratio works. PE ratio is basically price per share. Ito yung price natin closing kanina. And then, uh, sa so denominator, we have earnings per share. Ito yung net income per share. So, with this one, um, let's try to, to dig on this a lot deeper. No? Let's say, for example... I have a stock na nag-close kanina at 30 pesos. Okay? And this company, yung stock na yon, nagkaroon siya ng net income last year, nung 2019, nagkaroon siya ng net income of 2 million. 
at the same time, this company has 1 million outstanding shares. Okay, so with a PE ratio na, na formula natin kanina, we can identify that PE ratio is 15 times. Okay, so PE, ang PE ratio, it is called 50, uh, it's a multiple. So at, at this stage or at this time, ang PE natin at 30 pesos is 15 times or 15 multiples. No? So anong ibig sabihin netong, uh, netong 15 times na to? So let's say, for example, you or me or, or us, we are the investors. We are willing to pay 15 times for every share of the company's profit. Now, having said that, how can we use this to identify if it's expensive or cheap or overvalued or undervalued? I'd like to introduce to you two comparables. So we have one here, which is called Versus Itself and then versus it peer, its peers. No? Ang difference ng dalawa is that uh, on the versus itself, we are trying to compare yung multiple, PE ang tinutukoy ko ha, when I say multiple, uh, ang PE multiple ng isang particular stock sa sarili niya in the past. So it could be, what is the PE ratio ng, uh, ng dito in the past five years? How does that compare to its PE ratio today? Uh, versus on this one, dito naman sa peers, we try to identify kung ano yung mga peers niya. Ibig sabihin yung mga peers, yung mga kagrupo niya. Okay, so for example, financial sector. So BDO, ang peers nito ay the whole financial sector. So ano bang peers ng BDO? BPI, East-West, SEC, uh, SECB, uh, China Bank, etc., etc. Okay, so we try to compare. And then from by comparing them, we can identify if its current price is already cheap or already expensive. Let me give you a specific example. This is globe on 10-year PER or PE ratio. Okay? So from 2010, ang PE ratio lang niya nun ay 10.9. This is 10.9 times, ha? 2011 hanggang 2019. Last year, ang PE ratio niya is 12.5. Nagkaroon siya ng PE ratio of 44.1 noong, way back noong 2013. Okay, kaya ito yung nakikita ninyong malaking tore dito. Okay, now, ang average neto from 2010 all the way to 2019 is 18.1. So, what this means is Globe's 10-year PER is 18.1 times. Okay, now, if we try to compare that to today, then we can say, no, na, um, kung magkano man yung globe, let's say for example, by the way, ah, uh, dun sa mga hindi pa masyadong nakaka-alam uh, nakaka about this one, when we say E dito sa part na to, this is what we call estimate. Kasi hindi pa naman tapos yung 2020, di ba? So, nagkaroon lang ng estimation. Inestimate lang. Ang um, ibig sabihin, let's say we use this one at 13.4 uh, 13 times, we can say that globe is trading cheaper versus its 10-year PER. That is for the ano, versus itself, ha? Diba? yung pinakita ko kanina. Now, how about versus its peer? Now, I'll try to compare globe and tell. Okay? Ito uh, nakita nyo na siya kanina, diba? yung kay globe na 10-year PER. Ito naman yung kay tell. To identify, no, uh, yung on its peers, kasi when we say on its peers, madalas dyan, we are talking about multiple companies na nag-group together. No? Is it just so happen na just etong particular group na to, dalawa lang talaga sila. Na head, na head to head. Okay? So, um, let's just call this uh, the, the, telco, uh, the telco sector. Okay. Since dalawa lang sila na nandun doon, no, we can say na, okay, so ang average PR ni Globe is 18.1, while si Tel naman, 15.9. Okay. Now, how do we identify yung peer relations nila in terms of PE ratio? Uh, let's look at the most recent. The the very recent. We can use the, the average, ha? walang problema. Pero mas interesado ako doon sa latest, eh, which is the 2019. So we try to identify this two, no, noong 2019, 12.5 and 9.5.
we take the average of those and we can say that the average PER for the telco sector is 11% or 11, uh, 11 times. Now, uh, if I go back doon sa comparable section natin, doon sa, uh, doon sa versus itself, we can say that Glow's price is cheap based on its 10-year PER, which we have already established kanina. Uh, at 13.4 multiple or 13.4 times, mas maliit siya compared sa average ng 10-year ni Globe na 18.1. So it's cheaper. However, dito sa versus its peers naman, Glow is actually expensive compared to its peers. So Glow, Glow is trading at, ano ulit siya? Glow is trading at 12.5 uh, 12.5 times noong 2019. And it is more expensive compared to its uh, to its telco sector na 11 times multiple lang. Okay? So basically that's how you can uh, that's how you can use PE ratio no to identify kung overvalued na ba yung isang stock or undervalued okay uh, there are still a lot of comparables that you can use no uh, ginamit ko lang itong dalawang to yung versus itself and versus its peers because etong dalawa yung pinaka common even on the research na mapapansin niyo dun sa mga research pages niyo on your brokers eto yung madalas na actually ito yung pinaka madalas versus its peers kasi this uh, this represents yung kabo ang multiple ng isang sector. As opposed to sa sarili lang niya na basically ang kompetensya lang niya is its history. While dito, ang kompetensya niya is the average of the aggregate of the group. Kung saan siya belong. What else? Ito, may mga nakuha ako. Uh, so, for example, this is the, the whole financial sector as of December 14, 2020. Nakuha ko to sa first metro. Okay? The average of uh, PE ng financial sector is nasa 10.29. And as we can see here, so BDO is quite expensive compared to its average, peer average. While si East-West is severely undervalued compared to its financial sector peers. Uh, ano pa ba? So, si MBT is medyo, uh, medyo undervalued lang ng konti, but not that quite. No? Unlike dito talaga kay, kay East-West. No? Uh, what else? We also have the holding companies as of December 11. Ah. Uh, I try to mention yung date Dahil if you recall yung, yung, yung formula ng PE ratio, it accounts for the, uh, for the share price at that day or on that day. No? So, December 11, maybe today, December 21, iba na yung, yung values dito. Kasi it would, again, it would depend doon sa closing price kanina. Okay? So, for, uh, for the holding companies, we have... Ay, hindi ko na nakat yung ano ko sorry nakat yung average no uh, mas maganda sana nung ma-identify yon okay pero uh, here's another thing sabi ko kanina di ba yung comparables itself at saka peers we can also have the parang comparison between the closest relatable stock sa kanila so what do i mean by that we look at ac and sm by looking at these two we can say kung obviously kung sino yung mas mahal sa kan mas expensive sa kanila based on its PE ratio alone. We can even include si JGS kasi since malaki na si JGS although medyo uh, iba yung iba ang ano nato ni ni JGS. Siguro no, wag si JGS. Um, I can go with uh, AGI na lang. Kasi at least with uh, with ACSM and AGI we are talking about uh, the property sector, we have uh, Telco, Kaitopano, Ayun. Or even MPI.